Welcome to Future Franchi TV, bringing the truth to you. Good evening, wonderful people, great dear friends, wherever you are on the face of this very planet, we welcome you to another exciting edition of Radio Biafra Live Transmission all the way from Washington, D.C., the capital city of the United States of America. We are live and we are direct on a very sad day, a day that the zoo police and the army have decided once again to shed the blood of innocent Biafrans who we are gathering peacefully in a Boeing local government area of a Boeing state. This evening we shall explore in depth this very cycle of violence, intimidation, this very cycle of extrajudicial killings orchestrated and perpetrated by Fulani officers in the Nigerian army and police with the acquiescence of Igbo governors. Therefore, Mahi has a lot to answer for. But before we go ahead this evening, we shall try to be as interactive as possible. And I will be taking your calls as we proceed. Here with me is our Deputy Chairman 4. I will ask him to acknowledge the worldwide presence of this very noble family of the indigenous people of Biafra. But before I do so, we must pray. We must hand over these very proceedings to Elohim. As we always do and will continue to do until the end of time. Because without the Almighty Creator, the architect, the author, the finisher, the eternity of existence, we will not be here today. Every honor and every glory, every adoration belongs to him. We must acknowledge him. And regardless of where you are, you must bow your heads. And let us pray. After our prayers, you will invite your friends and your families. You will get all those who are blessed to be called their friends to listen to this very broadcast this afternoon because here is afternoon. The time now is exactly eight minutes past two p.m. in the afternoon in Washington, D.C. And it is 8 minutes past 7 p.m. in Biafra land. I do not know what the time is in the United Kingdom, but regardless of where you are, it is the same number of minutes past the top of the hour. I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you. My name is Inam Dekano. I am the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. And by the very special grace of God, Elohim, a servant of the wonderful people of Biafra. We must pray. Our Lord and our God, our Creator, who resided in heaven and watched over those who are called to serve your purpose and your mission on earth, Biafra land once again is soaked to the blood of the innocent. Your children are being killed, they are being massacred, they are being tortured, they are being raped by people we do not know. This very darkness have now enveloped your land for over 100 years. It has blighted our future and clouded our sense of judgment. Those that call themselves leaders are no more than servants to the slave masters. They have sold our future. They have sold our hope. Our children are suffering. The damage that they have done are irreparable. 
And today, a Bony State bears testimony to this very brutal repression and collaboration by enemies within. For a muzzle of bread, they will sell their people without conscience. Today, once again, we have been sold in a Bony. Those we look upon to protect the innocent are nowhere to be found, but instead they have turned to traitors because of what they can get from the Fulani Caliphate. We live in an era of darkness, an era of repression, of unbridled hatred, an era of executions, an era when our mothers are being raped and our daughters abducted before our own very eyes. An era of fulanization and Islamization of these children of light. We pray for your mercy and ask, O oh, Heavenly Father, that you may redeem us from this darkness, from this abomination, from this era of treachery and sabotage that we may triumph as you have always intended that this very IPOB, this very movement, this very hallowed platform may resound, O oh Heavenly Father, to the joyous songs of your freedom that we may rise up from darkness into light to behold your mercy and usher in a new civilization in the continent of darkness. That Biafra may come and your will, O Elohim, be done on this earth to the eternal glory of your name and your name alone now and forevermore we pray. He said, he said, he said, as I said earlier, our deputy is here with me and joining us from across the entirety of humanity across every time zone. Our dear friends who are willing, who are able, who are dedicated, who are devoted to this very divine mission of the restoration of Biafra. Therefore, I must preach this very gospel as I have been mandated to preach it by the Almighty in heaven. We have come to serve only one purpose. That purpose is to restore the Afra. Men have fallen today in Ebony. But the zoo shall pay very dearly for it. Before I go any further, I will invite our deputy to address their friends all over the world to acknowledge their presence and to reassure them of our determination and resoluteness, our never say die attitude, our relentless pursuit of that which is pure, noble, and right, that Biafra may come in our time that future generations may look back and say people like them will never come again deputy please fellow beer friends men and women of goodwill today is another sad day in the lives of beer friends and friends of Biafra around the world and in consonance in line with that mood a very somber mood indeed I will invite every Biafra, every member of this family across board and friends of Biafra to indeed come together and in unison lift up the souls of our brothers and sisters mowed down by the marauding army of terrorists from across Fulani land and aided by some unscrupulous politicians in Biafra land, that their souls shall continue to rest in the bosom of the Most High God until we all meet to, until we all meet them at the appropriate time. But make no mistake about this. The intimidation, the terrorism that they directed against us has emboldened us rather than dampening our spirits. 
They shall never rest where their murderers are. They shall continue to hound. They shall continue to hunt. They shall continue to torment them and their generations until they disappear from the face of this planet Earth. Their fright shall we restore on their honor and in their behalf because they have fought gallantly till the end. It shall never be well with the contraption called Nigeria and all one Nigerianists who are supporting this evil. They are not going to go scot-free. We have gone too far to even begin to think of going back. That is why in unison, we must continue to march on. We must continue to trudge on until total freedom and liberation is achieved. IPOB remains the largest indigenous population mass movement of Biafrans around the world dedicated to the ultimate restoration of Biafra. And like we have always said, we are not going to allow the heart of this project to see corruption. And so shall it be in our lifetime that Biafra shall be restored and that we shall be partakers of it. We are not going to hand over this baton to our children or generations of their friends to come. Rather, Biafra shall be restored in our lifetime. And that the rest of humanity will bear witness to it. That indeed, the most high God is our God and we are his people. Thank you very much as we proceed, of course. This is one of the momentous and the very important broadcasts ever as we come to you from the United States. Welcome back, wonderful people. This is Radio Biafra Live Transmission. The zoo is doing all they can to interrupt our program this very afternoon from here and evening. For those of us in Biafra land, it will be your morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on where you are. We are live and we are direct, and we want to inform the zoo that they can do all they can. They will not and cannot stop us from disseminating this very gospel as intended by Elohim himself. We are live and we are direct, and once again, I will invite our deputy chairman for who's here with me to at least say hello so that the world will know that he's still here with us. Richard, please. Once again, fellow dear friends, uh, just like our leader, Mazen Nankan, has said, the zoo, the enemy, we try, they will come up, they will rear their ugly heads, but because we have come from the kingdom of light, that of darkness shall disappear. We are IPOB, indigenous people of Biafra, ordained by the Most High God on a very definite mission to restore Biafra. And therefore, we shall continue to propagate this gospel irrespective of whatever the enemy is planning against us. Welcome back. Thank you very much. We are proceeding very expeditiously. This is for those of you in Eboe. You will join this broadcast, especially the coordinator of IPOB in Eboe. We will provide this number for those who are around where the events are happening, those who witnessed the invasion, the assault of a peaceful gathering of IPOB in a local government of a state to come on air and tell us precisely what transpired. And we will go on to build, or should I say, to paint a clear picture of the type of subjugation, slavery, and torment we are under in Biafra land and what the traitors are doing to embolden and encourage our enemies to continue this very reign of terror and intimidation of the Afrans. Every year or sometimes every month, they go about killing the children of Biafra, innocent, unarmed men and women. This is what the zoo does all the time. Any day we retaliate, the world will focus on it. Now that they have been killing us since 2015, massacring our people as we have been trying to establish here in the USA, the world is not talking. The day we rise up to say that enough is enough, they will try and do something about Biafra. There is somebody on the line. Are you calling from a Boeing state? No, we need only calls from a Boeing, please. I want the Boeing coordinator to call this very number. Plus one five one two nine five five two eight zero seven. We want to get a clearer picture to build an understanding of what transpired in Eboe. How the zoo army and police 
stormed the venue of a peaceful gathering and decided to start shooting at innocent people. They have not shot at Fulani people before. I mean Fulani headsmen who are terrorists. The fourth largest terror group in the world. We are going to go on this evening to make it very clear to all and sundry that these killings will not continue. There will come a time when we shall rise up to defend ourselves. The reason why we keep saying this all the time, each time they attack us, is that the world is still ignorant of these facts. The Nigerian government is very good at buying off politicians around the world. That is their expertise. They buy off media houses, they pay off politicians, not to talk about the atrocities they are committing in Biafra land in concert with the terrorists that they are sponsoring. Everyone knows that the Nigerian government is behind Boko Haram. Everyone knows that they are behind Al-Qaeda in the Maghreb. They know they are behind ISIS in West Africa. They know that they are the chief sponsors of Fulani headsmen. Miyeti Allah. No one can tell us anywhere any Miyeti Allah gathering has been stormed by the Nigerian army. They are the ones going about killing, pillaging, and sacking villages. They've done that right across the entire length and breadth of the Zoological Republic. And this evening we shall establish that. Or should I say this afternoon from here in Washington. I want you to get your pen and paper ready. Because it's very, very important that we view this picture. That we paint it so that the world can understand what we are passing through. They don't attack terrorists. Boko Haram is in the north. The Nigerian army is not fighting Boko Haram. The Nigerian police is not fighting Boko Haram. What they are doing and have continued to do is to kill and slaughter innocent people. That's all they are good at. Killing innocent people. This evening we want to ask them and to ask the conscience of the world why we should not retaliate. Why are we not going to retaliate? Because we must defend ourselves. Each time they attack us and we do nothing, it emboldens them. Any day we respond, they will now go to their friends and tell them, can't you see they're terrorists? That is why this very latest attack in Ebuin, we must bring it to the attention of the whole world. Every coordinator in every country of the world must ensure that the videos and the pictures are received by the host community or the host nation therein. We must let them understand this. Because each time they feign ignorance that they do not know what is happening, they are ambassadors in the zoo, having been bought over by the Nigerian government. Send watered reports back home to their respective countries that nothing is happening in Nigeria, that all is well. Most of the diplomats in Nigeria have been bribed. We made that very clear to them here in the USA. They do not report accurately what is happening in that very zoo. I want you to go online and please and put in, this is in a Boeing state. All those of you celebrating New York Festival, those of you who are very keen to invite politicians so you can share other people's salaries, those of you who are so psychophantic that the only thing you feel you can do is to prop up these deadly collaborators, I want you to do something this very moment. I want you to go online and type in, do a search, please. Governor Omahi lament Fulani headsmen attack in Ebony. I repeat, do a Google search. Governor Omahi lament Fulani headsmen attack in Ebony. What I want to do very simply is to put what we are going through into perspective. To ask the world, why would the Nigerian army and police attack a peaceful civilian gathering? Where people are gathered on their own. Whereas the Fulani headsmen who are terrorizing a boy state are getting the protection of the army and the police inside a boy. This is what is happening in our land. And the governor is there. The lawmakers in Ebony, they are all there, watching as Fulani headsmen can come in and take over our land, sack our villages, kill our people, rape our mothers. Nothing gets done to them. They are free. They can do whatever they like. Each time we gather together, not to fight a war, not to, 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 to participate in any form of civil unrest, they come to kill our people. But the Fulani is doing, or should I say, perpetrating the worst crime in Ebony, they are free to do as they please. The Nigerian army and the Nigerian police is more or less a vanguard for them. And the whole world is quiet. The so-called Nigerians, they are quiet. But any day, 
any day we pick up arms to defend ourselves, they will start screaming and shouting on top of their voices. The same thing happened to us in 1966. We made the mistake then of not informing the world, or should I say pressuring the world, to understand what was happening. We lost 300,000 people in Arawa lands in the north. Rwanda only lost 120 to 150,000 people, and the whole world is up in arms. In Rohingya, they have not killed up to 10,000 people, but if not to 5,000. Everyone is shouting and jumping up and down. They killed 300,000 Biafrans in the north. Before that, they have always killed us. Every blessed year in the zoo, they kill Biafran people. That is why when people talk about the presidency or participating or shoring up the disgraceful one Nigeria, I feel sorry for them and the ignorance that they have all within them. I feel sorry for these people. Every blessed year we have been killed in the zoo. Now, not satisfied with killing us in the north, they have come to our homeland. As the Fulani terrorists are busy killing people, taking over our farmlands, raping our mothers, their army and their police are busy killing our people. No protection from anywhere. These are the people that claim they want to go and contest for presidency. These are the people that claim that there is future and hope for us in the zoo called Nigeria. Fulani headsmen can come to Obonya and kill people and, 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 and get away scot-free. Fulani can come to Obonya and kill and walk away. In Anambra, they killed us in Anambra. Their reward was being absorbed into the administration of Obiano. Obiano gave them position of power in Anambra, Mietiala. He said they are part of his government. But these are people killing us. Now, do you understand why we said they, should, they cannot come abroad? Now, you understand our hatred towards Ohaneze, Ndioshina Atoro. Now, you understand that they have sold us our future and that of our children to Fulani Caliphate. Terrorists can come to our land and kill us, yes? No one says anything or does anything. It's reported in the papers and that's it. We gather together on our own peacefully in a village square and the army and the police will come also to kill us. This is a classic pincer movement. The so-called governors are undermining our people, the security of our land. They are in collaboration. They are in collaboration with Fulani army and Fulani police with Mieti Allah to take over our land. When we gather, they kill us. But Fulani people can gather in a boy, take over a boy, build their mosque in a boy, have their settlements inside a boy. Nothing happens to them. We gather on our own peacefully somewhere and they come to kill us. And you're telling me there is not something wrong with some people from Biafra land agitating for one Nigeria. Those of them running around claiming they're making peace. When they have demonstrated time and time again that they are not peaceful people. We are the ones, they came to kill us because we are the ones stopping the advancement in Ebony. I want you to Google Governor Umahi. This is the governor of Ebony State lamenting about what Fulani terrorists are doing in the state. None of them has ever been arrested. No single Fulani headsman has been arrested in Ebony State. The army doesn't arrest them, neither does the police. Why would they kill innocent people in Ebony? Innocent Biafans in Ebony? If you go through the search results on Google, it is very, very clear, abundantly clear as to what we are going through. What we are going through is terrible. This was the same Ebony state. Now listen to what Umahi had to say. This is Governor Dave Umadi of Ebony State. This is what he had to say regarding Fulani terrorists inside Ebony. Those that the Nigerian army and the Nigerian police cannot fight. And our people don't know something. In every state in Biafra land, there is Fulani army formation. In every state. In Enukudazi 82 Division. In Abakaliki, they are there. You will see the army barracks in Abakaliki. It's very obvious. In Imo State, there is open there. Artillery, all full of full army people, all full of terrorists in uniform. You come to Abia, they are in Ohafia. Even in Aba, they are in Asa. In Ugocha, you have the 82 Airborne Division and all those nonsense that goes with it. In every state, even in Onesha, they are there, Onesha Barracks. Our land is under occupation. Some of us are so stupid, we are so blind, we cannot see. Our land is under full army occupation. We are told that Boko Haram is in the north. We know that Israel. 
ISIS in West Africa is in the north. We know Al Qaeda and the Maghreb is operating in the north. We know Fulani Bandi three headsmen are all over the place. Have you ever heard that the Nigerian army confronted Fulani headsmen? Instead, the government gives them money, 100 billion naira, to encourage them to go. presidency of a ordinary promise not delivered every Igbo politician every Biafran politician are queuing behind Miyeti Allah and the terrorists in uniform in army and police uniform to destroy their own people to destroy their people because of political power and material gain I will read what Omadi said I will tell you when to call, please. People shouldn't call yet, please. Richard, we shouldn't let them call now. It's not now. Not they will call. Not yet. I will tell you when to call, please. Let's finish presenting this very critical background to as to where we are today in relation to the zoo called Nigeria. This is what Umahi said with his mouth. The governor of a police state, it was widely reported, said, this is from Governor Umahi. This was when I felt or I thought that Umahi had turned the corner. That he has seen the light. And this is what was said, or what he said himself. Hate men raping a woman, desecrating our land. Go and Google it. It came from the mouth of the governor of Ebony State. That hate men are there, raping our women in Ebony and desecrating our land. He accused them, especially those of them in Africa, not on nature and the Zil government areas. They tried to take his from us, and IPOD said no. He accused, the governor accused Fulani terrorists in Ebony of assaulting and harassing women sexually. Can you imagine if Fulani women were being assaulted or harassed sexually in Sabungeri in Kanu? Do you know what happened in Sabungeri in Kanu? By now, it will be ashes, completely destroyed. They come to our land now. This is the, this is the quality of leadership you have in Biafra land. That's how poor we are, bereft of ideas. Cowards are now in charge of political power. They come to our land and they rape our women, they desecrate our land, they sack farmers from their, from, from their fields and forcibly evict villages. Sack them completely. Villagers are evicted from their homes and their land forcibly taken. And here we are. Nothing gets done to these people. We have not heard that a Fulani headsman was arrested for raping our mother in a boy. No, no arrest. But any time IPOB gather the kill, the day we respond, they will say, can't you see they're terrorists? We told you they're terrorists. That is why before we do anything, the world must know. We, as we have been doing for the past week here in Washington, D.C., the world must know so that when we start, nobody will say, oh, but we didn't know about this. All that nonsense is gone because now we have made them aware as to what is going on and that we cannot continue to watch as they continue to kill our people that when we retaliate don't go and say oh but they said the terrorist group no it's because we're defending ourselves now some american lawmakers they understand it the opinion formers here now they understand it and that is the work that we all need to do you know they have recruited facebook you know they're doing all they can to make sure they shut us down everywhere. You must understand that. They interrupted our broadcast earlier. You must understand what the zoo is doing. That IPOB is not financially sound as to confront nor challenge the zoo. You must understand that very well. But do you know that Facebook is telling us that they cannot allow our notifications on Radio Biafra to appear on people's news feed anymore? We are under attack everywhere. The same thing that they did to us in 1967 to 1970. Complete and total media blackout all over the world. That was what they did. That was why the one got away with genocide. That was why the dead Buhari got away with genocide. In any other part of the world, the one will be in prison for life. In any other part of the world, the dead Buhari would have gone to prison before his death. But because we, dear friends, did not spend time enlightening and educating the world as to what we went through, that was why they walked away scot free. With the protection of the British. Let me drink some water. 
It's very, very upsetting. The governor of Ebony State said, and I repeat, Fulani headsmen are raping Ebony women, desecrating our land. This is from a governor in a state where his own people are being killed by the same people, by the same people, the same rapists, the same people. Because the army in Biafra land is fully staffed by Arewakonov. Are you telling me that Igbo soldiers can go to the north and kill people in the north for no reason? Why was he here removed? Because he was fighting and defeating Boko Haram. That was why Ihejika was removed. But they come to our land, they rape our mothers. Not, don't take my word for it. This is Governor Dave Omahi. Headsmen raping a women and desecrating our land. Go and Google it. From the governor himself. Instead of the governor to go and kill Fulani terrorists in Eboi, he allowed the police and the army to be killing his people. And when we rise up tomorrow and say we are angry with the governor, people won't understand it. When we say we are angry with these politicians, people won't understand it. What I have done before coming on air is to demonstrate that Fulani headsmen have attacked every state in Biafra land. Every state attacked. I sit under attack till this very day. That the army and the police have stepped, but they have army formations in every state. Don't forget that. Every state, some have to army barracks, staffed by Fulani people, commanded by Fulani officers. All our police commissioners, and I wouldn't say our, all Nigerian police commissioners in the in the land of Biafra, are all northerners. Or they are on a flea for seeking to serve them. But they never attack Polani headsmen. They bring their tankers laden with inflammable liquid, they explode it in crowded areas. No one complains, no investigation, no statement from the government. None whatsoever. Instead, some fools will be blaming fire service. Some idiots will be blaming fire service. Did you not see? The attempted tanker explosion in Enugu have failed. This morning we got a report around that one. Another tanker. They have planted. They pack the tanker. They open it. And then they set it alight. And people die en masse. Some idiots were busy talking about fire service. As if having fire service would have solved the problem. So you need fire service in, in Omaba. Fire service in Newi. Fire service in Enugu. Fire service in, in, uh, in, in Abwa. Is that how it works? Why are these trailers not falling in the north? Why is it that Fulani hates men are not being hunted and killed by the army? Because they're terrorists. The fourth most deadly terror group in the world. These are the things I've been telling Americans. We've been telling them. And they're beginning to understand it. I was quite shocked that most of them said they've never heard about these issues before. Which is not what they said? That's what they said. They've never heard about it before. I said all this, uh, you don't know what? All, all this shenanigans. They have, they said they have, I said, don't you know about so funny? They said, no, they've not heard about it before. Because their ambassador and their embassy in the zoo decides not to tell them the truth. All that nonsense that it is a full and a, uh, a clash between farmers and herders. We debunk all that nonsense. Clash between who and who? They have come to take our land. They are in Ebony. The governor of Ebony, the number one citizen in Ebony, is saying that his men are raping Ebony women. And there are Ebony people all over the world. You are keeping quiet. Your mothers are being raped. And you are quiet. And you say you are a man. You want presidency in 2023. Presidency in my foot. That is from, from Governor Mahi. And uh, as they are busy killing their people, some other fools saying they're organizing a, a party we are Miyeti Allah apologizes to Benue people I said it before that Miyeti Allah that they are full headsmen people did not want to believe that but if they're not full headsmen why are they apologizing for all the deaths and the mayhem in Benue it was covered by the news it's everywhere just google it Miyeti Allah apologize to Benue people go and google it you will see it there Miyeti Allah apologized to Benue people. What are they apologizing for? Let us try and find out. So you understand the hypocrisy of evil governors, the hypocrisy of the politicians. You understand the wickedness and the evil in the hearts of men in the zoo. After killing people, they hold a public ceremony, they, they fetch them, they, 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 they call newspapers and all that nonsense. These are murderers and these are killers. 
before we came on air, we watched Donald Trump say that our Baghdadi, the number one ter terrorist in the world, has been killed in an operation in Syria. As Trump is busy killing ISIS leader, ISIS offshoot and affiliate, the leaders of the most terrible group of terrorists you have in the world, right now, Fulani headsmen, they are in a public ceremony, you know, dancing and uh, shaking hand and drinking uh, Zetu Kunu or Furadi Nunu. Which one do they drink? These people. Go and Google it yourself. Miyeti Allah apologizes to Governor Autumn and Benue people. Apologize for what you ask. Why were they not arrested? And I will read it for you so you understand. He says the Miyeti Allah, Kautal, uh, whatever her name is, has apologized to Governor to Samuel Autumn, governor of Benue State, for the attacks and killings in the state caused by headsmen. Do you understand? It's just like saying that ICE is coming to America to apologize to the American people in a ceremony between Trump and um, al-Baghdadi. Uh, that um, al-Baghdadi has come to Trump to apologize for the Americans beheaded and all the Christians killed and tortured in Syria and Iraq. Are you listening to me? What they are saying is that they are the killers. Miyeti Allah is apologizing publicly. Which means that Miyeti Allah and the Fulani headsmen are one and the same. And this is the people that the government gave 100 billion naira to. The zoo got gave them 100 billion. Is it to buy more cattle? Or to buy cattle feed? No. They gave them 100 billion to subjugate your people. Now when they come to Biafra land, they go into a community, they call the president general of the community, they go to the nearest um, um, traditional ruler and they give them money. And they camp. As I'm speaking to you, that's in Surimo, not too far from my house, but we shall drive them away from there. In the next two, three days, they will, they will drive away from there. Of course, they know that. That is what is happening in the land where you come from, in the land of your ancestors. We have existed for over 5,000 years on that same piece of land the blessed land of Biafra. But this very crop of politicians you have, this very group of psychophants that you have, that think that incessant issuance of press release will somehow elevate their relevance or their personality in the eyes of the people, they are the ones now trying to do all they can to sell our heritage for a pot of porridge. One idiot, because he wants to stay in power for eight years, answering Zoo president, will destroy our race and our civilization. He runs he, tried the same nonsense. Look at where we are today. Nam Yaziki will try it. Look at where we are today. All the idiots that kept singing one Nigeria, they are directly responsible for our plight that you are in a country where terrorists are being celebrated in the open, giving, giving huge sums of money. Innocent people are being shot dead in Ebony. Even though the governor himself opened his mouth and said that these people are raping our mothers and desecrating our land. Now you understand it, don't you? Now people appreciate where we are coming from and why we do what we do. Yet the Allah in public acknowledging that they are funny headsmen. Yet the Allah. They are the ones telling you who will be the president of Nigeria. Is that the type of country you want to belong to? Where a, a bunch of badly educated terrorists, illiterates, decide who rules the country. These are the idiots speaking. You've come to, instead of them to be locked up and to be put in prison, they are out on the streets boasting. They can kill whoever they like and get away with it. And some idiots, of course, when I speak, they say, I shouldn't denigrate black people, but I'm telling you, there is something fundamentally wrong with our reasoning capacity. This UG, I'm telling you, there is, there is something dysfunctional about our, how our brain works. That you have terrorists and they're in a public ceremony having fun. You go to a community square and you're killing people who are innocent. They've done nothing to you. The right to peaceful assembly granted by the Constitution thrown out of the window. But of course, the zoo doesn't obey the law, it's a jungle. They are not civilized enough to obey the law, even those that thought were reasonable. Even a mecca and I thought is a citizen diplomat. That is the thing about black people. Maybe sometimes the more, the more certificate they accumulate, the more stupid they become. They don't know what a treaty is. They don't understand the meaning of a coerced treaty and what it entails. And these are, these are diplomats and intellectuals. I wonder. I weep for these people. You signed an agreement to keep your borders open. You went and shot the border. And you're telling me that it is good. 
If it is good, then why did you sign the treaty in the first place? Shall I get to that later on, of course. But that is the suit for you. They say, oh, he's an intellectual. He's a leader. But he, in his brain, there is absolutely nothing in it. Nothing. The brain is empty. And God wants to really make it very explicit. I'm sorry to digress, but it's very important. I just want to let you understand the length that these men will go to please their masters that appointed them in the first place. The world presidency is a death knell. It is a total, complete destruction of us as a race. Also, Mama Gayu Burabu, he also tried, as if he were tried before him. What happened to us? What became of us as a result of it? People don't understand that Chuko Hikao Biyama never wanted, at no time did God in heaven ever want Biafra to be part of Nigeria. Never, ever, ever. That is why we keep suffering until we realize it. Mieti Yala, having fun in a, in a, in a, in a boy, having fun in Benue. Benue attacked. Togi attacked. Go and write it down now. It's all here. I want to build so you understand. Why is it you have never heard the same way that the world is hearing today that IPOB family members peacefully gathered in a local government area of a state? We are shot dead by the Nigerian military and the police. You would have thought that the Nigerian army would be after terrorists, isn't it? Like Fulani Hetman, isn't it? But lo and behold, they are not. They are after IPOB. And um, one day we shall respond, and when we do, the world will no longer say, oh, we didn't know about it. Your newspapers will not write about this. They won't. No, trust them not. And they'll say there was a clash. I want you to also, I want to prove that these Fulani headsmen have attacked every state in Biafra land. Go to your Google and you type in Fulani headsmen attack any good state. Do you all remember Nimbo? The, the Nigerian, and in fact, when Governor Guani was calling Asorok to say, please do something about your people attacking the people of my state, they ignored his phone call. Go and ask the governor. They ignored his phone call. He called 82 Division to say, my people are under attack. They never responded. But if it is IPOB, you will see a more cars, you will see tanks. As I was trying to explain to U.S. lawmakers, and there are opinion leaders here that the Nigerian army is not fighting Boko Haram. They are not fighting banditry and kidnapping in the north. All their armies are in the south, concentrated in Biafra land to kill innocent people in the guise of keeping Nigeria as one. And I have something to say about those fools who are saying that, um, I mean, somebody wrote, uh, I don't know if it's uh, uh, in a newspaper in the zoo, that IPOB has calmed down, that we are defunct. That is how foolish some people are. We are defunct, and every day people are pleading for unity. Every blessed day, Nigeria must please come together, unite, and be one. If we are not effective at what we are doing, why else will you be asking and pleading for unity? Why would you do that? It's because we are potent. Because you know that the zoo must fall. Nigeria must collapse. There is no alternative. No amount of weaponry, guns, illegal abduction of innocent people, extrajudicial killings can save Nigeria. It is unsalvageable. All we are trying to do is to make the world understand what the felonies are doing. Once well, that sinks in very well, then we commence. No one can blame us then. Hate men have attacked Enugu. Hate men have also attacked Ebony. Go and Google all these things. Write it on Google. Hate men everywhere. They have attacked Anambra. Google it. You will see it. Three Anambra communities lament for the hate men attack. It is everywhere. They have attacked everywhere. But have you ever heard that any information, be it the people in, in Onisha, be it the one in Obins, rise them up to go and confront terrorists killing villagers? The answer is no. But if IPOB is gathering somewhere, you will see them. They will storm the place and start killing people. That's real. Why are they killing us, you may ask? It's because of your politicians. You know, we have this very selfish streak about us. And that is why uh, black people, we are overtaken by other races on this earth. We are self-destructive. Our selfishness and ability, to, should I say, ignore what is happening to other people is the reason why we are where we are today in terms of our lowly scale.
if you measure us against other races around the world. Anambra has been attacked by Fulani headsmen. Everywhere is under attack. But I keep asking this simple question. Have you ever seen or heard that Nigerian army or soldiers in Onisha barracks mobilized to go to any of the communities? Ubenu, Achala. Communities to go and confront headsmen. The answer is no. But tell them that IPOB is meeting here in somebody's house. You will see them, they will come there and start shooting. After shooting their girl, they'll say nothing will happen to us. Britain will protect us against the world. Nobody will ask questions. Why bother? And you have some idiots in the after the war that um, uh, we are, their mothers were impregnated by, by filthy, Fulani, uncircumcised soldiers. You will see them. They are Fulani by blood, but they have Ibo names. They will go on social media and be talking their usual nonsense. They never see anything wrong until they themselves are consumed. Only then will they know. We are under attack. Immense attack. And like the Jews of Europe, if we do not take time, it will consume us all. They were in Anambra killing and pillaging. Also, there were hate in Imo. What did they bring the barracks to? Absolutely nothing. There, they were killing people and pillaging as usual. They say they called it Vanguard. This was called it double tragedy in Imo. That's headsmen kill people. Did the army mobilize to go there? The answer is no. Did anybody report today that when IPB was meeting that anybody died as a result of any confrontation? The answer is no. What was the army doing there with the police to kill people? Because the politicians, nothing. Let me tell you something. The politicians have decided that nothing is going to stop them from having a shot at the presidency in 2023. Of course, everybody knows that they won't get it, but that is the way they are. They don't have our welfare at heart. All they care about is the money they're getting from allocation and how to improve their families and their psychophants. That's all they do. According to Vanguard report, Omo Waibu community in Okibo, government of Imo State, said they can no longer cultivate and harvest their crops due to fear of attacks by headsmen. Fulani headsmen, Fulani headsmen. In Imo, when they were complaining, did you hear anybody from Obinze? They seem to go and save them. The answer is no. Because Fulani headsman is a Fulani man, a Fulani terrorist. The man at, uh, at Obinze commanding them and their foot soldiers, they are all Fulani people. I call them terrorists in uniform. That is what we've been struggling to, not I wouldn't say struggle, but explaining to the international community. That the people you call Nigerian soldiers and army, <laughs> they're actually terrorists in uniform, that's all. They didn't go there to save them. People were finding it difficult to, call, to carry out farming activities because of the killings. They went to a way to protest. And that was the end of it. Imo states too, under attack. How about Abia? <laughs> of the very deceitful and <laughs> satanic case one day, anyway, go get it good. You're working on a nobi. Full army headsmen attack. That was how they described it. Full army headsmen attacks in Nigeria. This is Abia. Abia is under siege as well. Burning. People dying. They have killed us so much that when you hear now about full army headsmen attack, it is like a, a, you know, another news. Because we are now immune to the atrocities of the full armies. That somebody felt that the best thing they can do is to organize a jamboree where they where they superficially come to say that they're apologizing to Ebony people. But in actual fact, all they're doing is planning their next line of attack. Abia is also under attack. Have, the reason why I'm reading out all these things, this, you can Google it if you want, is to prove to you that every part of Biafra land is under attack, that you can never see the army or the police mobilize against their own. The Nigerian army and Nigerian police understand what their terrorist brothers are doing and they're supporting them. This contrasts with the stupidity of your average Igbo politician or aspiring Biafran politician that wants to please the North. The Nigerian army and Nigerian, Nigerian police don't give a damn to what you think. Their job is to protect the interest of their terrorist brothers, Flanny headsmen. And they're doing it in the open. They don't hide it. 
But for us to round a simple meeting in Ebony, those of our people in Ebony don't want it because all they are thinking of is before they spoil business for me. Do you see how selfish some of us are? But in the end, we are going to triumph and prevail. And any day we pick up arms to defend ourselves, the world can no longer blame us because all these things are obvious and very apparent. We know what to do and we're doing it. Abia State under attack as well. Even Abia women protested. Have you forgotten? Abia women came out to protest the invasion of farmlands. Our mothers being raped. Our land desecrated in Abia. Has OKZ has a reason to say, I charge the police commissioner or the commandant of Ohafia barracks to do something about it. No. They are, all their meetings is about IPOB, IPOB, IPOB. And what is IPOB fighting for? The well-being and freedom of everybody. How about the Fulani headsmen that the governors are protecting and their political friends? What are they doing to our people? They are killing our people. I don't know if people can actually try to, to see the irony of the whole situation. People coming in, people came into our land to kill us, to rape our mothers, to take over our properties, and the army and the police are supporting them, including the governors and the politicians, those in Abuja and those in Lagos. Those who 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 owe their livelihood and their living to full on patronage. Don't pray that way. Some of you call them intellectuals. <laughs> I call them semi illiterate fools. Fulani soldiers and police are busy protecting Fulani headsmen. Protected by a Fulani government. It's called Fulani Cabal in Asarok. Fighting for Fulani interest. Fighting for Fulanization. Fighting for Islamization of everybody. And you see your own people who are dedicated to saving you and your race and your family and your future generations. And you're conniving with Fulani soldiers to kill them. And you're telling me that you're normal in the head. Abia State was also under attack. Let us try Delta. Is Delta safe? Of course not. It's not safe. Hence, yes, men attack police van, kill four police officers as they sack a village in Delta. Now, they said they burnt our houses in Abba because a policeman allegedly was killed. His name is Alahaji. Nobody knows the policeman. But here, Headsmen attacked police van, killed four police officers in Delta, went into a village and sacked that same village. No single headsman was arrested, not one. Avachiko Vikadi Amawai, he decided to place me in Africa. This is torture and this is punishment. I would have had to endure this and say a few percentage of the population being this stupid. But to have a whole swathe of people, towns, cities, populations, cowering, fearful of a band of ginger weeds from the north is beyond me. When Fulani killers go to their villages, they don't say anything. When they see a bear fan flag, they go into a seizure. That tells you the mindset of these people and how warped their reasoning is. Headsmen attack and kill police officers. Of course, police officers from the south, those who are stupid enough to be on the front line. They go into villages. I'm asking you to, I want you to Google Fulani headsmen attack Anambra. Fulani headsmen attack Ebony. Fulani headsmen attack Benue. Fulani headsmen attack Kugi. Fulani headsmen attack Delta. Fulani headsmen attack Edo. Fulani headsmen attack Bayosa. Fulani headsmen attack Rivers. Fulani headsmen attack Apaibom. Fulani headsmen attack Cross River. Everywhere you have the footprint of Fulani on the march. Fulani they're everywhere. Killing. But I'm asking you, as you ask about the Nigerian army response to what the Fulani are doing, it is zero. Because the Nigerian army, the Nigerian police, Asorok, Cabal, everybody is working towards advancing Fulani interest. Some of the politicians in the zoo from Biafra, they are busy advancing one Nigeria. You know that those 
Our uh, people don't know that history has a very funny way of repeating itself. They will think that because the program happened in 66, it won't happen again. That's how stupid some people are. Even as if we did the same thing that all these idiots are doing now. One Nigeria, where did it get us as a people? It was all with the same thing, one Nigeria, where did it get us? I think you don't see one Nigeria. Okay, we are away today, I ask you. But look at the Fulanese that take care of Fulanese interests. They have everything given to them. Because our people don't understand how politics in primitive Africa plays out. What we are fighting for is freedom, and the Afra must be free. Is Akwaibom free from Fulani headsmen attack? The answer is no. Akwaibom is under siege. Have you heard of army attacking any Fulani headsmen, arresting any of them? The answer is no. But people wake up every day and pretend nothing is happening. They go to their stupid workplaces and they come back, they gossip, they lie, they deceive themselves. And they write junk on social media, that's all. And the day is gone. No meaning, no iota of meaning to their lives, none whatsoever. They brought a 45 year old from Khartoum in Sudan mm, to mimic the dead Buhari with Aisha giving them every clue in the world, they still can't understand it. They can't understand it because they are black and their brains are empty. Fulani hates men attack. In a quiet bomb, a quiet bomb state government reacts over it. That were any of them arrested? No. If it's IPOB, they open fire. They don't even ask. They come see people, be a front flag, they start firing. They're full on the headsmen and the bushes killing people, and no one is holding them accountable. How about Cross River? You think maybe Cross River is safe? Of course, you are kidding yourself. Because in Cross River, they attacked and they killed 10 people. What I'm telling you, look at what they destroyed. Go and Google it. Headsmen attacking Cross River. They killed 10 people and destroyed homes. 3,500 homes in Obio, Usiere, Odupani, local government area of Cross River State. But these are some of the people that said that they prefer to be in one Nigeria, that Fulani people are their friends. Today, the same Fulani people, they call their friends, have descended on them and killed 10 people. And I challenge any of them to tell me the village that evil people went to in Cross River and killed 10 people before in their history. To see how foolish we are. The same thing I say to those of them that have subscribed to the warped view of Niger Delta. If what the Fulanese have done to the Ugoni people, if half, let me say half, if half of what Fulanese have done to Ugoni people, even with the death of Kensal Uwa, had Igbos done half of that, by now, Igbos wouldn't exist anymore. But despite everything that's been done to them, despite the fact that they have killed Kelsey Rewa, polluted the land, destroyed livelihoods, rendered them hopeless to the point of sacking villages, they are still saying uh, uh, maybe restructuring will save Nigeria. Do you see how stupid people are? Can you understand how foolish people are? I do. Most people don't. Even Akwaibom, Cross River, Edo, they are not safe. Attacks in Enugu, you know that very well. In Benue, I got you. All, all forgotten with one handshake. Instead of being able to say, or for Governor Autumn to say that I need Mieti Aladidas in jail, he's busy shaking their hands, talking nonsense. And BBC was <laughs> gleefully reported it, doing the bidding of the enemy. You know me, I speak the truth. I don't care. I don't give a damn. I just will tell you the truth. No matter who you are. And that truth is what sustains IPOB and drives Biafra forward. Even BBC reported that we are attacks in Benue, but you will never hear BBC on this earth say that Fulani or Mieti Allah are terrorists. Never. Look at all the states they have been to, committees they've attacked. Nobody will dare to rise up and say these are terrorists or that this is the hallmark of a terrorist group. No. It's IPOB with flag that is a terrorist group. The hypocrisy of black people. How about Bayelsa? Is Bayelsa free? Let us check. Google Bayelsa. Full of heads men attack Bayelsa. Very simple um, 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 entry on Google. No, of course not. They have gone to Bayelsa community and they have killed, and I will tell you exactly where they killed people in Bayelsa. The place is called Tofani. T O R F A N I. Tofani. In Sabama, local government area of Bayelsa State. Full of heads men are there killing people. Do we have grass in Bayosa? Is it not the mangrove? Mm -hmm. We have mangrove in Bayosa. They said they're looking for grass. Is there any grass in Bayosa for them to eat? They're cattle to eat? But they are there displacing people. 
than killing at will. And all they can see, all the useless FLF positions can see, is IPOB gathering, that's all. Fulani are there killing you, and all you talk about or concerned about is IPOB and the coming of Biafra. They can't stop Biafra from coming. How about Hedo? I'm talking about all these places because we have our people there. There are Biafrans in all these places. In Edo, in Ewanke, there are Biafrans. And they are under attack from Fulani terrorists. Supported by the Nigerian army and the Nigerian police. Delta is gone. Of course, there is a heavy attack in Delta. Who doesn't know? Let me give you the names of the villages in, in Edo before they, uh, they say that we don't know what we are talking about. The place is the Okomu Oil Company. If those that know it will know it. And I will give you the names of the villages in Edo. Ohua, Oke, Umope, Ekban, in Ihue clan. In a Humwode local government area of Edo state, they came with their sophisticated weapons, with their bows and arrows and cutlasses and other dangerous weapons, brought into the oh my goodness to destroy and to kill and to pillage in Edo. And you still have some Edo people saying, we "One Nigeria, we want to belong to Nigeria. This one Nigeria, this uh, uh, this Biafra thing." You see how foolish they are, because whom the gods want to destroy. He first makes them mad. These people can no longer reason. When people attack Biafra, it is because they can no longer reason. How about Kogi State? Some of you don't know there are evil communities in Kogi. I've said it, but you know, people don't read history. They say, oh, uh, Namde Kani included Kogi State in his Biafra. You know, idiots who didn't go to school. I went to school and I'm educated. There are Biafra communities in Kogi. And the funniest thing is that they actually speak Igbo language. Igbo, they speak Igbo. I-G-B-O, they speak Igbo language. But some of you are so... This is the... This is my anger with Ohaneze. They claim we are the apex Igbo organization. We represent the interest of the Igbo people. How about the Igbo people in Kogi? In Benue? Do you look for them? Is it not IPOB looking for them? And finding them? And giving them a sense of belonging? And making them realize that Biafra is for all. We will not abandon anybody. Even the Izon land in Ondo, we will not abandon them. We are taking everybody with us. Some of you claim you went to school, of course, went to school in the zoo. No sense of history. I feel sorry for some of you. But there is a civil community in Kogi State. They are also under attack by Fulani people. And um, tomorrow they claim that um, uh, it was uh, in five states. And Ohaneze will foolishly and hopelessly corroborate such fallacy by restricting themselves to, uh, sometimes they say seven states. We are in Benue and in Kogi. And by inference, dear friends, we are everywhere. So we are everywhere. Now I've mentioned the some will say, oh, can't you see it's an Igbo affair? You know, to be people. But Britain is not an English affair. England is predominant in Britain. Nobody can say, but uh, England, uh, the, the English people have anything else, no? You know, when you have primitive people in Africa discussing politics, you always know. You always know. So we are there. We are there. And what we have done this very week in America, I feel it's important that we inform the people, because there's nothing the Zoom can do about it. Everything is in the open, it's not hidden. Is to inform and educate the policy leaders and opinion formers here in this country who don't know anything about <laughs> what we are going through and what we are suffering. As some of them said, they said, you, you are talking to yourselves. That is why when we visit the EU, the UN and all other governments around the world, some of you don't actually know what we are doing. But the work we are doing is very, very important. Without it, what happened to us between 67 and 70 will happen to us again. And as I said previously, and I will continue to say, I am not prepared. This IPOB will not repeat the mistakes of the past. We must remain very strong and resolute. The enemies will try. They will buy over Facebook. They will buy over Twitter. They will do everything within their powers to frustrate our effort and our movement. But we must never, ever, ever give in, nor capitulate. Because our freedom is far more closer than some of you would even imagine. 
It's not everything that I tell people. It's not everything that I tell our people because um, the zoo is working around the clock, both locally. Anytime you hear go on, anybody come out and say, Nigeria is indivisible, our unity is not negotiable. They have paid five or six lobbying firms and diplomats abroad to be echoing the same sentiment that the zoo is indivisible. Let me tell you, you know what they're telling people outside? <laughs> Zoo, they're very foolish. You know what they say to them? That Nigeria is so big. If you divide Nigeria now, it will have a ripple effect. It will destabilize the region. And I always say to them, is Nigeria bigger than Soviet Union? Soviet Union had nuclear weapons. Is Nigeria bigger than Soviet Union? The answer is no. Is Nigeria, in terms of political significance and importance, greater than Yugoslavia? The answer is no. But all these great countries, they broke up and nothing happened. But that is what the zoo does. Now the zoo is using blackmail. If you allow Nigeria to break up, there will be regional instability. And you know what they were saying to the Americans? They said to the Americans, you don't have the troops to come down to West Africa to keep the peace. Because Nigeria is 200 million with 300, 350 odd ethnic groups. So that when, listen to what they're telling the world, though, this is what the zoo is telling the world with the help of the British, of course, that if you decide to break up Nigeria, that means you're going to have 350 countries emerging from Nigeria. Do you see their trick? Fallacy. This is a fallacy, as the deputy will say. Do you see their fallacy? So, when you're speaking to American lawmakers, they're saying, oh, no, but you're 350. You know, that means there'll be chaos and disorder. And I said to them, no, it's a lie. You have 350 clans. That what you have that is actually major ethnic groups in the zoo is not more than nine. The rest is just a variation of dialect. Variation of dialects does not mean you are a new nation or a new country. That's what we've been doing in America. Well, I did before the colonial masters. And uh, we existed before Lugard came, and there was no problem. Now Lugard is gone. We want to go back to the way we were before. There shouldn't be any problem. I want to tell you the land that the zoo and their masters, their handlers, are going to try to frustrate Biafra and what IPOB stands for. They say to governments of, of the world, but we are a government. You shouldn't be listening to IPOB, uh, the terror group. Don't listen to them. They are rabble rousing. <laughs> but we are together, you know. I told you it is called diplomatic strangulation. By the time we are done, we will march. And when we march, nobody on this earth will blame us. That's what we are trying to establish. That is what your so called politicians are trying to ruin. Because they want to remain slaves. They want to remain house niggers. They want to remain the favorite of the Fulani Caliphate. So they can make them governors, make them senators, make their children House of Reps members, and send them to state and local assemblies. Because everything else have collapsed. And now let me also add this so that people appreciate why we want to be Afra and nothing else. And I will use the same point to give as an example. There was a very viable industry <clears throat> built by Dr. Michael Lockman, of course, with a significant impute from Dr. Zikiwe. And Kalago cement factory was called Niger Sem. Now listen very carefully. <clears throat> the primary source of raw material for Niger Sem is gotten from Ebony, from Nkalago, is limestone. Limestone. Limestone occurs in abundance in Ebony. As you well know, Ebony is naturally endowed. You know what they did? Igbo politicians went to the north, to their Fulani masters, to the caliphate, collected money came down and shut down in Kalago cement factory in Ijasem. Some of my uncles were working there then, the mobulars. And they gave the monopoly of cement importation to Dangote after they ruined Ibeto, of course. Ibeto was a one Nigeria believer, but where is he today? And now let me <clears throat> make this very clear to all of you listening. They don't, Dangote doesn't manufacture cement in Nigeria. Now, listen very carefully, please. What Dangote does is to import the dust, the cement dust, from abroad and bag it, repackaging, in, into, into a bag uh, that has Dangote on it. People are saying that Nigeria is good for us. Let us campaign for the presidency because they are myopic. 
they are evil, they are wicked, and they are ignorant. If they could not allow you to use a naturally occurring material, limestone in a body, to produce cement, but instead shut it down to import cement dust from outside, costing valuable foreign reserve because it's bought in dollars. How can you convince yourself that such people love you? Are you not stupid? It is the same Ebony that we gathered earlier today and they decided to kill us. And you know why they are doing it? Why is it? We are here in Washington. Because we are in Washington. So they are panicking. They, they, they are so rock. The corridors of power is panicking. Because they have sent messages to them that we are here. What did the, the former ambassador tell you? Yes, ambassador to here. That I know that you are coming. That's correct. One of the ambassadors actually 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 told us, told me that I know you are coming to my office. I won't say his name now, but I will publish the pictures that I took with him. He said, I know you are coming. They've been discussing in Washington that you are here. So I know you're coming to my office. And uh, so the zoo knows, and they are panicking as usual. Uh, they know we, we cannot fail. They know me very well. And that IPOB cannot fail. They know that. And they know that our destination is Biafra. That no Jupiter. It doesn't matter who you are. And as I also told our American friends, if every Biafran has to die in the process of Biafra restoration, so be it. As long as there is one man and one woman left to carry on giving birth to a new generation of free Biafrans, so shall it be. We are not backing down, not one iota. Our people should just watch this place and see what is going to happen. Forget all this stupid local propaganda by people impregnated by uncircumcised Fulani men after the Biafra war, even during the war itself. The march of IPOB is relentless. And in that regard, and Uta, please arrange for somebody from Ebony to give us the exact details as to what is happening, please. Very, very important. We need it. Ask them to call this very number. And whilst we are on it, we must tell the world that we have committed no crime to warrant the Nigerian army to open fire on innocent people whilst Fulani headsmen are busy killing, pillaging, looting, and raping. These are the things you must understand. And I also want to warn IPOB and Biafans at large. The enemies will come. The enemies will come. Not openly sometimes. They will come in every guise. They have hired media, social media influencing firms from Russia and from Israel. And two other companies are also helping them from the UK. Some of the people you see answering Biafran names, castigating or criticizing you, they're not Biafrans, you know. They are computer-generated profiles and ID to give the impression that we don't love ourselves or that we are fighting ourselves. You must be smart and rise up to this very challenge. Let me also warn you that whereas before, when you write a post, you will get 500 likes, a 1,000 comments, that era has come and gone. It will no longer happen. What Facebook is doing, what Facebook is doing is to give the impression that people no longer respond to your post or they no longer read from you. No matter what you write, the highest you can get sometimes is 10 or 20 likes on your personal page. Uh, don't be dismayed. Don't be disgruntled. Don't allow yourself to become downtrodden. Always know that the enemy is at work. And we are all reading what you're writing. Don't expect Radio Biafra London page, which at some point was the largest in the world, to continue growing because it will no longer grow beyond 1.5 million. Facebook made that very clear. They are trying to curtail us. They are trying to rein us in. Because with the use of social media, we were able to let the whole world know, at least some of them, partially what is happening in our land. Everybody must go to Twitter. Everybody must go to Instagram. I repeat, every Biafran must open a Twitter account. Every Biafran must open an Instagram account. Not to be posting and publishing nonsense, but to use it as a platform to educate the world as to our plight and what the fun is intend to do to our people. This battle is on all fronts. Make no mistakes about it. They tried and succeeded in imposing media blackout during the war. We are in the digital age. We are not going to allow them 
to repeat the same thing this time around. We must be very, very vigilant. And I have a few, are they ready to speak to us? This is from South Africa. No, it's not this one. Once they come, I will show you the number if you can confirm it. Then we go live with that very call and we hear what they have to say. Let me also repeat that there are those here in the United States of America who are in the habit of starting one useless scheme or the other. I have not given the authorization to start any scheme, any banking scheme in America. That is very obvious. Let me also remind those who are working against the, direct, the directive that I gave regarding the $1 contribution. What we are doing is very expensive. If you know, you know. I directed that every Biafran in the United States of America should contribute at least $1 to our central account. $1 to our central account. I also understand that some people mischievously went to campaign against it. If I hear that you're campaigning against any project, any scheme, any program that I authorize, you will be moved out of IPOB. Those that know me know that's the way I operate. Anything you are doing that is not sanctioned, you must shut it down immediately. You must shut it down immediately. If you are in the habit of speaking against the order that I gave that every beer friend in the USA must contribute a dollar towards this very effort, if you have spoken against it in the past, then retrace your steps, otherwise you will be in very serious trouble. I will expel you publicly from IPOB. I'm telling you that. Ask those that thought that they were something before. Where they are today, they are groveling and begging, and they cannot come back. I assure you of that. We are, we are not joking. This is Radio Biafra, who is speaking your name and where you're calling from, please. Good evening, sir. Good evening to you. From the land of Epoye, Biafra land. This is my video for Wanda. Yes. Safe coordinator, IQ, the boy, the boy, the boy, the boy. Yes, go ahead. Good evening, Biafra, from over the world, not out of freedom, the way we shall. When they help us. Today is the Black Sunday in the land of Epoye. Right in the book. Go ahead. Have we lost him? Have we lost him? I encourage you to please try and call back. Have we lost him? Yes, I think he's back now. He's back now. We have him online. Yes, please go ahead. In the land of the body, quick. Yes, go ahead. Presently at Kuzibo Community Primary School. In a local government, we are peacefully in the conduct of a human manner. We gathered to celebrate with the identified local government, a local government, on the inauguration. All of a sudden, we saw the presence of the Jewish security, the Nigerian Joint Forces, with their DSS police army, all committed public arms, took in and started firing right from the main road where they were dropping from their inner room. They started shooting, not minding the aged men and women who gathered there to. Because there's no other crime we commit, rather, they saw the Arab flag posted in the premises. They started shooting on our people. As I speak to you right away, the hearing of the world, many are on severe pains. Various bullet wounds, which the pictures all over the internet, I speak to you. Many have been adopted. I can't give account of the number of persons that have been adopted by now. The husband and wife, level practitioner, was shot off his tires with two tires were shot with knife bullets, which they adopted him and the wife, as I speak to you now, among this zoo security custody unknown to us, they are aware about. Many people have been adopted, and they are still going house to house, as we speak, in search of our people. I talk to you now, the entire city, the monopoly of the boy you said, has no rest, because their genocides are running all over. Circles of more than 50 in number were all shot on the boat for tires. The tricycles, the motorcycles that were within that facility, were all shot on their tires. Many people, as I speak to you now, the village is disaster. Because because of the level of gun shoots at the premises, everybody has to pick on heel. Mexican mothers, young and old, all have to pick on heel, running, because of what is happening. And the situation we find ourselves today in the state, and all these things were sent by nobody other person than a big noise of my head. master of the Sulanese in the state. Right now, we have carried these parties. We have about three people, three, who were shot on both legs with light bullets. And the entire state now they have been checked, sent in the government hospitals, private sectors, to render treatment.
went to them, they abandoned them that we must get police support. From the same people who shot them. I speak to you now, these people are lying on TV attempts. No admission, no treatment ongoing on them because of the molestation and inhuman treatment ongoing. As to cause us going into the bush areas and survivor hours and all the things that were on their heels. And this is the same place we came down with his troop and some similarly headsmen who are there to occupy the lands and nobody go after them. Those of these agents after them, all the crime will come into that will gather in the same place. But no more gathering peacefully, compared to nobody. In the situation we find ourselves, we say today, I wish to bring this to the notice of the world to see the level of inhuman treatment that is going on. The various places in the state as we speak to you now have been disrupted by the headmen and nothing is going to do. Yesterday they threw them down in the group on military lights, they brought in different types of military uniforms and paramilitary and disrupted to these headmen, which as I speak to you now, if you come into the monopoly and to the local areas of the state, you begin to see even the armies in the very rural and rural timid areas. And I wonder what the army is doing in the timid areas, as in the life of the people. As the client to commission operation, OPI as they said, operation positive identification, and even the body farm, and this operation must be conducted at night in the state. And once you are found, there is no uh, national ID card, put that part on you, they will shoot you and throw to the teeth. This is the old woman act that is going on in the state. And very basically, they do two trucks, loaded of soil out, which are used Arabians, to the less that even the alpha who were in the state before, the threatening alarm that these are killers. And this is what they might can do for the state, bringing in people on the table, the people of the society, to suppress everybody. And speak with you, there is no cordial relationship between a good living level that has to do with the political and government because of what the has meant. Killing people. If they will find them in a village, they will find their houses and properties and claim that it is possible that people are coming and attacking the people. And then we go to his brother and find their houses and claim that it is a communal war. There is no communal war ongoing in the community. This is an attack, open attack. Many have been apprehended blind. And when you remove the masses from them, you see that these are finally assigned by the state government. If something happens between Indo people and that of Belwe, there is no communal crisis in this environment. There are the people that raise this alarm. Just like that, which our people say, the one who threw the stone where they saw you and come out and shout, who threw stone. He, the governor of the state, is the one who is generating all these inhuman activities through the I speak to you, the local government chairman of the Bonnie State, that the local government has been going around house by house, checking people, all for the fact that the individual says they don't have where they are family more or less, and yet I still have no respect for council prayer. Now they have changed profit from that of the food and now in the state to agricultural livestock, uh, farm plantation. Right in the issue, the knowledge and local government they went through a court appointed commissioner, and that of the local government chairman with the commissioner was there, declining that occupants of 20 square hectares of land should relocate to unload the selection that they want to build an NPC station there. But the question is, are you building an NPC station in such a village where even the private state station? has not been patronized to tell and more or less talking of theorizing that of the real people for them. This is the level of molestation they are giving to the state. Right down in the city, 100 square hectares of land have been dominated with the ghost of flat in the real public inside the own state. Right in our state community, the same thing is happening. The United States, the same thing is happening. The nation, the same thing is happening. Creating inhuman measures between the neighboring villages. Creating that of atrocities. There's no single money you make up, you don't find a dead corpse on the street. There's no single money you make up, you don't hear of the rape of the young women and aged women. This is the 
the Romans, they are doing into the state. And we are calling the world to come to our aid. To come to our aid. We are dropping our protection on daily basis, every minute of the day. Thank you, my leader. The pen I'm seeing over the people who are lying on the moon cannot even allow me to express much. And even as I speak to you, the hearing of the world is shocked. Of the level of the left fire at this premises today in the people committed primary school. I don't think that one boss can back the cost of this bullet that was fired in this premises. As people do now, the instrument is fit, we were sitting on, we were all loaded in their heel office. Even the food that were cooked to give to people to see, and because of the gathering we had, they packed everything. Drink water, pure water, can water in their numbers, to their healers, when possible. As I speak with you now, the boy should be on record that I receive a little bit of robo, and the wife is in their hands, unknown to us what their situation and condition is as we speak. Because for them, the open place to shoot like bullets, or fire or fire at why or right. I wonder what their condition is as we speak now. If the world should be on those, Many who were they carried away by their faces, but now we have not gathered their lens that we stream down to the next morning. We should be able to communicate ourselves all around the state and know who is missing. That we may come up with the details of their trust that we thought of the people of the today. Thank you once again. Good evening. We are friends in the land. Good morning and good afternoon, depending on the side of all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you for that. Um, thank you for that. You, you've heard it and um, what they're doing. They came and they shot, they killed people. I need the name of the barrister and the wife and the names of all those injured. I pray that no one is dead because he didn't say that anyone was dead. So we're just praying for that. We need pictures of the injuries with their names, the exact time that they were shot that we may continue to compile and supply this information to global agencies that they may bear us witness any time we decide to march. That is why we are doing what we are doing. Because when you come to places like this and they tell you we've not heard of this problem before, that means anything you do, they will say, okay, the, the Nigerian government said you're terrorists, that means you're terrorists. So we need to come to explain ourselves, to let them understand what the Fulani terrorists in uniform are doing. We are confronting terrorists without uniform, and then terrorists in uniform. The same governor of Ebony State said that our land is being overrun by foreign headsmen. He never called the army, he never called DSS, because the secret police, the DSS, the army and the police, they're all foreign people. They don't go to school, but they're in the army. They don't go to school, they're in the DSS. They don't go to school, they're in the police. I don't know. I, don't, I can't. And they're using terrorism as business. And, and, and for them, terrorism is business. As, as I told people here in the USA, they come to you and they tell you, oh, Boko Haram is doing this. They kidnapped the girls here. They are the ones kidnapping the girls. The Nigerian government is Boko Haram. The Nigerian government is Miyeti Allah. They are the terrorists themselves. These are the things we need to explain to every government around the world. Every coordinator in every country. And some of these people, rather than busying themselves with schemes that I have not authorized or giving them permission to... To, to double into what we need them to do is to make sure that every lawmaker where you are we are going to prepare a series of information every lawmaker in the 100 countries around the world that ipob is domiciled must understand what we are doing and why we are doing it because the zoo is unsustainable nigeria is worse than a jungle nigeria is not supposed to contain human beings because the people there are unbelievable. They are unbelievably wild. We must continue to do this very work. There are people calling. Do we have time to take calls from New York or something? Yeah, a few. There is a caller from New York, please. Um, can you arm that? Um, the caller on the phone, please. Um, you know the protocol. You know the drill. You give us your name and, and where you're calling us from, please. Your name and where you're calling from, if you may. Yeah, hello? Your name and where you're calling from, please. Yeah, my name is Mark Steve. I'm calling from uh, New York here. Yeah. Go ahead. Good. Well, I have been following you, Mazin and the Carlo. Um, I respect you so much. Um, I thank you once again. Your spirit is so high. We acknowledge you. We, we are making sure 
in one way or the other, putting our, our heads together, I've been making sure that I've been following you all, all, all your um, broadcast from all the center. Um, I think we really, really have to step up because the rate at which um, the killings are, are now is getting alarming. I don't know what we, you are doing or your strategies you are putting in place, but also um, we really have to minimize this. In, you know, I don't know how you do it, but let's minimize it. Um, now for John. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is he part of the family? Are you part of a, are you part of the IPB family in New York? I'm not actually um I'm not actually but I'm working towards it. You see, because you have very good ideas and it will be very very uh, beneficial if you are to be part of what we are doing and avail yourself of the IPOB family forum in New York to ventilate some of these issues and then it will be implemented. Um, IPOB is there to make our people um, have a collective sense of purpose and I expect you to try the much you can to be part of IPOB. You said we must hurry up. We know there's only one way to stop them. We need to defend our land against these people and we know that our people, those that you claim are politicians, will not do anything about it because all their life they have been serving for an caliphate. It is up to us to do something about saving ourselves, saving our children, and unborn generation. And if you belong to the nearest family where you are, that will speed up that very process. So I have um, acknowledged what you've said. We shall do something about it, but please join the nearest IPOB family where you are. If there is none, you can start one yourself because IPOB belongs to all. Thank you very much for calling. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Yes. Um, do you have anything to say to our people before we um, um, bring today's proceedings to, to a close? Yes, just um, to add to what you have just said, um, and for our people to brace up for the challenges ahead because the killings will continue. They will come against us even harder than that they have come now. But the most important thing and is... And this information will be lying against us again. Of course. Before governments around the world, of course, good. Nigerian government has earmarked billions of the worthless naira to deal with our people. They have started with Facebook, they are partnering with Facebook to try to minimize the damage, the exposure that we are giving to them. So, what is happening on social media platform is not by accident, it is a deliberate ploy, it is a deliberate and orchestrated and um, conscious effort to try to destroy IPOB from within, to try to minimize our influence. But they have lost it because all our messages have been delivered to the appropriate quarters. All we need to do is to co continue to sustain the pressure. They will get tired, like our leader have always said, has always said. And after us, there will be no people like us again. Let us take more calls. Yes, I think it's better we take more calls. We have a call on the phone, please. Your name and where you're calling from, if you may. Um, I see. Uh, my name is uh, Sergio Batomonape from uh, Texas, uh, Dallas, Texas. Uh, there was a time you came over here, and uh, we met you. That was the time I was the president of uh, Aka National Union, Texas. Yes. Uh, I would like to have the this uh, central account number, please, because we many of us wanted to pay, and uh, we want it to go directly to the central account. And secondly, there was uh, one of our brothers who was uh, in charge of IPOB uh, Dallas. Uh, I am a member, but uh, now it was suspended since uh, 2016. That's uh, uh, with Innocent. And we have been searching around to see whether there is any other person who appointed to head us here. And uh, we tried to get in, in, in touch with the woman in Houston, but uh, I don't know how I remember. Mrs. Sopara, uh, Chisholm. Uh, yes. So far, when I need to charge for Dallas, we will not Yes, I will. I will. I will. Yes, I will make sure. The, you must understand something that um, in IPOB, I just don't wake up one morning to suspend people. If you disobey a direct order, you will be suspended from IPOB because we need to be disciplined. But I have a telephone number to give to you our overall coordinator in the USA, and this goes to everybody in the USA. Now, let me also say this to you. Once you find yourself without any the nearest contact of IPOB, you start IPOB family yourself. Start one yourself, where you are. You are IPOB. You are also IPOB. You can start IPOB family yourself in your house with your wife and your children. You can start it okay. in your bedroom if you want to. 
Yeah, because so Biafra, of course, I'm giving, I'm, please take down this number. Very, very important. Mm -hmm. Because this is the no. national coordinator of USA, Dr. Oko, his name is Dr. Okoro, I call him, but it's Okoro. In my hand, I'm like, I couldn't say, his name is Dr. Okoro. Yes, Okoro. It's 512 uh -huh. 825 Absolutely. Contact him and you can start a family where you are. Thank you very much. Of course, of course. I I can really I can really really thank you very much.
The, the, thank you very much. The, the line is, the line is, I don't know what is happening to the line. What is it? Is it the network here or something? Yes. Is the network here? I think I'm going from, uh, I think I have to jump back. In fact, I, 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 allow me to call you back. I will call you. I will call you back. I think we need to call you from here. Let me call you back from here. Okay. We'll call you from here. Uh, It'll be, be a, a good man, of course. And it doesn't go to his head. When I call him a good man, it doesn't go to his head. He is normal. He is normal. He doesn't go to his head. But, but it's true, isn't it? You know what, people? Uh, we have a caller on the phone. Can you hear me, please? Your name and where you're calling from, if you might. Hello. Hello, I'm calling from Florida. Please, yes. And what is your name? My name is Alexander Sotochuku. It's a beautiful name. I like your name. Sotochuku is a very beautiful name. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much, and I appreciate um, the good work you have been doing. Uh, and I ask that God will continue to empower you so you can... Uh, get more revelations and uh, do the right things that God has um, empowered you to do for the, the people of Biafra, you know. Um, I really want to point that that is some certain things that is happening in the zoo, um, called Nigeria, and I think um, exactly what they are planning to do now is to wipe out um, the, the whole Biafra land with um, the kind of a strategy, which is the new one that's called the Operation Identification of the and I think they are doing all these things because they want to concentrate mainly on the south side and the southeast to see how they can be able to 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 to, to, to steal and, and then uh, to bring us a little bit down so we cannot be able to see exactly what is going on. So I really want to know how we can be able to 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 to, 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 to withhold to, 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 to face this kind of a problem that we are we are facing right now with the with, with, with this um, about. Because the more they are getting close to us, it's like a cold war. And I think it's high time we have to give them this cold war as, as well, too, because they are using some of our, 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 our Japan, uh, I don't know what to call them, but they are using the same people against us. And I think we still need to have our own strategy to see how we can be able to kill the same people in the same cold way they are using them against us. I don't know, but I just want to um, give my own contribution and my own quarter today. So um, this is my own. Thank you very much. Thank you for calling. But I have to ask this question, which I ask everyone. Are you part of the IPOB family in Florida? Well, I'm trying to work on it, but I'm not part uh, yet. Don't work on it. You can start a family. Something to go start a family where you are. Start an IPOB family where you are. You are a Biafran. If you're in Florida, you start an IPOB family. Okay? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. This is Radio Biafra. Please try and contact a lot of people from the U.S. today. Um, the caller on the phone, can you hear me? Um, allow me to try and um, and get uh, you on the speaker so the world can hear you. Please, your name and where you're calling from. My name, my name is Emmanuel Akobondo. I'm calling from Maryland, USA. Thank you very much. Please go ahead. Yeah, the, the about the account number. The account number is correct. The only thing is that what they use as a routing number is actually the account number. While the uh, routing number is the account number that was given. So it's a Chase Bank. Chase Bank. So can we confirm that the account number is 515? No. No, the account number is not 515. It started with 07. The 515 is, uh, is the routing number. Give me, give me, the, please give me the account number the way you have it. Okay, uh, let, 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 me, let me get it because I have it on my phone. Yes, get it. I, on my cell phone, I'm getting it now. Okay. Let him, let him, the, our Texas coordinator, is he on the phone? No. Is uh, the number for our Texas coordinator, please, for our dear brother, rang from Dallas, is 214, this is the IPOB coordinator for Texas, 214-664-8119. One one nine Ndubeze, our Texas coordinator two one four six six four eight one one nine. We are still waiting for our brother, somebody's coming from Milwaukee as well. My goodness, um, we are still waiting for our brother to give us the correct details because apparently it was um swapped upside down. It is not correct, it is not correct. People are saying it is not correct, so they need the correct number. We want the correct number. We have a caller on the phone. Can you hear me? Yeah, hello. Yes, please. Your name and where you're calling from? Oh, my name is Peter. Your name is what? Have we lost him? We have lost him. We have lost him. I need to unhold. 
the, the caller on the phone, can you hear me? We have a caller on the line. Can they hear us? I want to know if they can. The caller on the phone, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, please. Your name and where you're calling from? Okay, I'm calling from Malaysia. John. I'm calling from Malaysia. From Malaysia. Please go ahead. Am I on with Madam Namikan? Of course you are, yes, and the world as well. Not just me, the whole world is listening. Go ahead. Okay, so thank you very much for coming me on then. And I also want to first of all um uh memorize with you for the mother of your president of the mother. Okay. And hello. I'm listening, go ahead. Yes, I want to know because in Malaysia now, between the family of IQB is more functional. And I have been making calls and trying to see this to me. If there's any room can um, have a family here that is viable, that is very, very strong, and also that will be that will that will that will be very proactive in for, for the past uh, two months now or one year as a case of this, there is no no meeting, no family, so I don't know how we're gonna start the new things. Where where are you in Malaysia? Where exactly are you in Malaysia? Sure Allah. Sure Allah, so in the care of care. Okay. Okay. What I need you to do is. I've got to a place of culture. We used to have a meeting there, but nothing is going on there anymore. So let them come in now. Okay. No problem. And thank you very much. I will raise this very matter up with our leadership in Asia. I know that um, Obi Law Anthony is very, very strong and one of us. Very formidable and strong. And everyone knows about my affinity my attachment to Malaysia and my regard for them, which I wouldn't like to see diminish, uh, because I see Malaysia as being very critical and preeminent in this very effort because of the role they played when we started. And that is not going to stop. Thank you very much. Thank you. I shall take that up with them. Thank you very, very much. Uh, we have a caller on the phone. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Martin Lambicano. Yes. I'm on And where you come from? I know Bo very well. The, the home of our great leader, the greatest of them all, Sam Mbappe, yes. Yes, I'm from California. From California, thank you very much. Please yes. go ahead. Yes. yes, go ahead. If you have one million dollars to give us, but the minimum is one dollar each person once we have it. If we can replicate what we have done at the EU, the UN here in the US, across major countries around the world, we will fend off the advance of the zoo and at least be able to gain the relevant support and sympathy needed to confront a monster like Nigeria. Without it, we will fail. If not for what we are doing right now, we will fail. So every support must be brought to bear on this very effort. And I would like you to be a part of the family in California, if you are not. And I also want you to make your contributions if you want to. The minimum is $1. Anybody who wants to give us uh, $10 million, they are welcome. But I can assure you, if IPAB has $10 million, uh, Zoo will fall in four days. I can assure you. I can assure you. I can assure you. That, that is what we are doing. On, on that, we cannot go into details. We are, where am I in the USA? I haven't come here to watch beautiful cars and lovely skyscrapers. We came here for something important, and we are doing it, and we are succeeding. What we need is the support, and then you leave the rest to us. We know what we are doing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye now. Um, I, I want to get our... Oh, dear. Somebody is calling. Um, Mazi Obid. We are going to get hold of him. You won't be able to speak there. The call on the phone, can you hear me? Your name and where you're calling from, please. Hello. Yes, please. Your name and where you're calling from? Yeah, my name is uh, Dr. Peter Obao Keke. I'm calling from Richmond, Virginia. Richmond, Virginia. Thank you very much. Please go ahead. Yes, we want to know who is the God letter here. And then, about the Zell, we try to send money to Zell. The Zell is asking for a special uh, phone number. So if uh, I want to be a, I want to be a on this issue of transfer, those of all want to transfer, but you could not. Zell, what is happening to the? Hold on a second, madam. What is happening to the Zell? Can we clarify this? What is the problem with the Zell? 
He's asking for a special number. He wants to send money, but he's asking for a special number. For phone number, yes. He's asking for phone number. So can our leadership in the USA give us a phone number for the Zell, please? So that those who want to pay via that means, when they confront this very problem of phone number, they actually have a number to give to them. Please, we need this very number. Is Mazi Obid is on the line. Maybe Obid will be able to clarify for us. Please stay on the line. Okay. Yes, please. Okay. Yes. Watch it, go ahead. Watch it, go ahead. Again, once again, my sincere condolences. Of course, I just, I just I'm calling him because I heard what is going on. The people saying something about account and everything. Um, I think the, the first thing that all these callers will understand is that when you give information here, it's important that they follow up with the information. And that's what I'm calling to clarify and help them. You have rightly made the announcement about our national coordinator, who is Dr. Okoro. I know it spelled like O-K-I-O, but the pronunciation is different. Dr. Okoro, because we have people running around here confusing on people who wants to play a role. If we get that right, then we will know about Dr. Okoro, Okoro's number, Okoro's number, which we have already given out. And I'm willing to give it out until we hear. Um, um, please give me a second. Let me get the number clear again to validate what you already given. Number for the national coordinator here, Dr. Okoro, Clement Okoro, is 512-825-9300. Again, 512-825-9300. Okay, that's his number. The second one that you uh, called here is in the basic. It's who is the coordinator of um, Texas. Okay, imagine to be a basis in the basis number. It's just the last name. It's 214-664-8119. Again, 214-664-8119. That's my Ziggy Jesse for Texas. Now, the account number that we are talking about uh, with uh, for the for this one one dollar donation. And remember this one one dollar donation is for charity for our people. Go there and make you one dollar and make sure you pay for the entire family, not just you. There's no way we can use one one dollar and fight for freedom. This is a charity. And it's, the account name is Bia Foundation Incorporation. They are like they are from DIJ Foundation Inc. This account number is the recipient again, BIA Foundation. If you put in this BIA Foundation, if you are using Zell, Zell is a service that is provided by major banks in the United States here. The Bank of America is using it, US Bank is using it, Chase is using it, and so many other uh, major banks here. Once you go in, you use the Zell, and Zell is spelled Z E L L E. Zell will take in these services free of charge. And what you need to do is they will you set up an online account. When you set up an online account, you go in, it will ask you for recipient, you put in this their foundation INT Inc. Their foundation Inc. And the next thing you put in there. It's not a phone number. There's an authority for phone number, but you don't need a phone number. The next thing you put in there is where the email is required, which is dia, the same dia, 67 foundation at gmail.com. Again, the email to this account is dia, dia, 67, number 67, foundation at gmail.com. Once you put in this email, remember the recipient is their foundation inc. Their space foundation space inc. And you put this email in where the, the, the required space. And you put in your money and the, the money goes straight. Okay, you don't need the phone number to this account, please. We have heard that people are walking around and uh, asking who is the minimum in this account, who is on from this account. Now you can hear that our leader authorized this account. Okay, because uh, I'm watching again, when you leave now, they will go around and start reacting again. This is the account you can hear now. The leader is confirming it. I'm here giving you the same information. So there's no need running around questioning about who 
lost his account. Go and say, send that joint to this account. Go, it's a simple obedience, people. Go in and make this one dollar donation. It's your family of five making five dollars. And that is my so I make for one day. I've made mine. So I am not telling you what I'm not doing. Now that is it about this one one dollar. However, remember that we have participants already in the United States to give an offering of sixty dollars monthly for this freedom. This with the sixty dollars is an offering. If you are one of the participants, if you want your name to be on record for this guy's own project. And the, this very uh, 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 this very project must be supported. One one dollar is just charity. So that you will contact your state coordinator. You contact your various state coordinators. Marcia Rose is on the radio, whatever state you live in, call Marcia Rose's program. The same radio the that you are listening to right now that you're calling our director. The same radio Marcia Rose comes to this radio every day at six. Uh, um, I mean, 9 a.m. for people that live in the eastern region, for me, it's 6 a.m. We have Peter Ike. Peter Ike is one of the radio hosts. He comes at uh, 6 a.m. Eastern time because I see a lot of people from Maryland and all these places that are going. In Los Angeles, here we are well, it's 3 a.m. So I wake up and I listen so I can see what you're saying. If you want to know the coordinator of your state, you call in and make inquiries. They will direct you on how to participate in what we're doing. I know our leader said you can coordinate. That means you don't have to, if you hear this gospel, you don't have to waste a minute to join. That's what it means. So that aside, did that say, that the way we conduct ourselves, we want to be in uniform. So you must conduct, you must uh, consult, consult your state coordinator to give you guidelines on what you need to do. Because we don't want a situation whereby somebody will start running around and start collecting people's money and say, Ali, that told me on the radio to, to start the family. Everything that is done here is done in accordance with the IPOB fundamental guidelines. If the land is, is under occupation, and we are here, Marion and Marion, peacocking ourselves everywhere, we are last, this marauding foreign terrorists are in our city in our own family. So this is the information I want to share. Uh, I want you to share. Another thing I want to say is the account in, uh, that says pressure is an authentic account. That's the national account here. This account was established in 2016 and is still okay. It's the national account for states that have not gotten their, their state account running. I know that New York have their state account running. Uh, Jerry, there's a police, there's a police is there. I know that California have a state account running. Um, but my chief joke here is doing it here. Uh, I know that other states, uh, Atlanta have their state account running. Marzia Nyakiri is doing that. So these are state accounts that are running. Meanwhile, for people who haven't had their state account set up, for these participants, for being the participants in this freedom project, you will donate to this account that says it has a, a 738 pressure address. It's an authentic account. Any money that goes in here drains to the headquarters, financial headquarters of IPOB. And this is what I want to clarify. Again. Thank, you very much. thank you so much for your presence here. Um, I'll, I can thank you enough. Uh, and uh, my role model right there, uh, my for I can thank you guys enough. And God will make sure that you guys go back to your respective destinations uh, come few days as we'll continue. To all of your friends, remain faithful, remain diligent, remain truthful. The truthfulness is what I ask of you. And more importantly, humble yourselves. But God is here to set us, set us free. Thank you, my brother. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. Mazu Bido Bienu, our North America rep. And um, I think that brings us to the end. A lot of people, yes. And also, our our madam is here, our woman leader here in the USA. She just walked into this very broadcast. I think it is an honor to have her with us here. And I want her to acknowledge our people. She she came to see me. That was good. Please go ahead. Thank you, all dear friends. And... Um lovers of freedom around the world. 
My name is Mrs. Bridget Okafor. It's a great honor to come here to see our leader today. In fact, um, at this stage now, we are going home. There is no doubt about it. Mama has left to open the white door for us. So I don't have much to say. We just walked in. But definitely, we are going home. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you very, very much. Um, I would like people at home, especially the politicians and those in the zoo, to see her. Um, if there's any definition of a thick madam, uh, this is it. Uh, yes, yes, she has a very commanding presence. Um, very commanding, I must say. And I welcome you. I welcome you here to see us today. Um, do you have anything to say? A lot of people are calling. If we start taking calls over here till tomorrow. Uh, but we have to prepare for the things that we have to do. I must thank everybody who has actually listened and tuned in. And I do have the name of the... Some people wonder what... You know, I think it's very important that we explain to them what happens within IPOB. Some of you may go online to see harrowing pictures of our people shot, wounded and injured. I've not received any news yet of any casualties. Some people don't know that any deaths yet, sorry. Um, some people do not know that we take care of all our injured. We take care of their families, and if the injuries are serious, we fly them abroad. That is what IPOB does. We don't tell people, but that is what we do. In case you wonder what we do in IPOB, we take care of our own. And also, um, we've not been afflicted with any mishaps abroad. We also take our people home should that need arise as well. What I just received not too long ago is the full name of the lawyer that was abducted in Ebuin. His name is Barrister Cyril Orogu. Cyril Orogu. Orogu is spelled O R O G W U. O R O G W U. He was abducted with his pregnant wife, Akuna Precious Orogu. And we know Fulani terrorists that they enjoy cutting open the stomach of pregnant women. That is the way they operate. So I am directly asking the governor of Ebony State. They will mahi to ensure that nothing untoward happens to Barrister Cyril Orogu and his wife. They should be released. Those who should be arrested and detained are the Fulani headsmen, pillaging, killing, and raping our mothers in Eboi, and not this innocent couple. That's what I have to say. Richard, you have any closing remarks, please? Well, at this juncture, I must have to... Uh, Thank everyone, our brothers and sisters, our hardcore IPOB family members, and friends of Biafra. And what else can I keep in here? Our enemies are surrounding us. We are under siege. They will try to pillage, they will try to kill, they will try to maim us. But in the end, they will lose because we are going home. We are not going to be deterred by the amount of terrorism that they are directing against us. Those that have come before us have experienced this. Ours is just part of it. But we are human beings. Sometimes we wear, sometimes we feel the pains. And that time is here. I want to encourage everyone who are undergoing different degrees of pains and difficulties, especially those in Biafra land, under rain and shine. We are in solidarity with all of you. Together, we shall restore the effort. One thing is clear. That contraption called Nigeria shall one day cease to exist because it is an abomination unto mankind. The children of light have come and it will reign and control and supersede that of darkness. The effort shall be restored on behalf of our brothers and sisters who have gone before us. On their honor, on their behalf. Together, we shall all see their friend. We are not going to hand over this button to our children or to their friends to come because it is a divine mandate for us to do so. And under the able leadership of our leader, Mazin Namdekam, we shall be victorious. It doesn't matter how long it takes. Thank you once again and God bless. Thank you very much, Uche, our very own able deputy. I thank all of you all over the world that listen to us today. My assurance is always the same, that we are determined and very resolute and Biafra shall come in our time. I have not seen anything nor encountered 
any circumstance to lead me to believe otherwise. I know that Biafra will come. That is why here on this hallowed platform, Radio Biafra, is where we worship. And Chuko Kikabiyama is our creator and our almighty. I thank you all for listening and from me from here in Washington, D.C., it is good evening. Thanks for listening to Fitchy Franchi TV News. Don't forget to click the red subscribe button and the button bell for more updates. Thank you.